What is going on guys? Welcome to Tech Savvy Buyer. So Nvidia made some pretty huge announcements this year at CES. Let's talk those coming up. Welcome back guys. So as I mentioned, Nvidia has made some several huge announcements during CES this year. For those of you guys who are not familiar with what CES is, it is a consumer electronic show that takes place every single year, usually in January where all tech companies, gaming companies and whatnot come together and show off their newest and latest greatest tech and different products that they're working on, a whole bunch of stuff. So unfortunately I couldn't participate this year, but you bet your butt I'll be there next year for sure. Now, NVIDIA has made a couple of really, really big announcements that personally I'm very excited for and I think that this is a good step in the right direction for the company as a whole and even for us consumers or reviewers or whatever you want to call us YouTubers slash, you know, just people who use their products at the end of the day, definitely it's a good set of steps in the right direction like I mentioned. So number one, NVIDIA has finally officially launched and released the GeForce RTX 2060, guys. Now, this is priced in at $349, and Nvidia is going on to claim that it has a performance of about 1.6 times that of a PS4 Pro, which is a pretty interesting way. You, didn't, you never really see you know, um, graphic card manufacturers ever compare their stuff with a console. So I guess that kind of has to speak something because they're, they're saying it's 1.6 times the power of a PS4 Pro. So whatever that makes you guys feel, I, I think it's kind of weird that they did a, you know, comparison in that nature, but that doesn't mean that's not good. Now, this card has 240 tensor cores, which is the main thing that helps with computing ray tracing. And that's what's cool about this card is that it's actually going to support ray tracing. And they're even going as far to say that you'll be able to play Battlefield 5 at a solid 60 FPS with ray tracing enabled. And that it's allegedly 60% faster than the GTX 1060 6GB. So this card is actually positioning itself to be the next dominate mid-tier card, just like how you see with you know the GTX 1060, the RX 580s, cards of that nature. And it even says it's gonna outperform the GTX 1070 Ti. Now I've made a couple of videos during Black Friday and whatnot going through some of the good pricings that we saw on some of these cards, and the GTX 1070 Ti more or less falls around the $400 to $450 price range, and you can catch it on sale maybe for 380 or whatnot. Now, as I mentioned, the RTX 2060 is supposed to be 60% faster than the GTX 1060, which is today's kind of, you know, mid-tier 1080p gaming card that I would refer people to. So that's a pretty decent step up. Again, this is going to trump even the GTX 1070 Ti, like I mentioned, and all for a price of $349. I think that's pretty competitive considering the RX 590 is priced around $300. So for a little bit more, you're getting way more bang for buck in terms of performance. And of course you get access to doing ray tracing. So definitely a pretty, pretty solid announcement. Again, a lot of people were speculating that this was gonna happen, including myself, but nonetheless, I'm very excited. I can't wait to get my hands on this specific card because I'm pretty sure the benchmarks are gonna be pretty cool on this card. So. I'll keep you guys updated with that once I do get my hands on that. Now moving on to topic number two and perhaps one of the other most interesting things, Nvidia has finally announced that they're gonna be releasing the RTX chipset lineup for laptops. Now you're gonna start seeing the RTX 2060, the 2070 and the 2080 series all line up in different gaming laptops. I know that Acer and Asus have both already begun developing different laptops that will contain these processors. Actually there is supposed to be a whole bunch of them, um, not any brand is specifically going to carry certain ones over the other so you'll be able to catch them in any one and that's starting to you know take place again in this month so if you're one of those people that were just tired of holding out and waiting for the 1060s and the 1070s and the 1080s or generally the 10 series of cards to phase out and get into the RTX series of cards into mobile gaming they're finally making the way into that seg uh, you know, that segment. And as we typically see, it's always about eight months to a year where there's kind of a delay. In this case, it was a lot faster because the RTX cards are still relatively new and it's only been a couple months since they've first been launched. Nonetheless, exciting to see that they're making the move into laptop gaming as well. And now my last announcement that was shared from Nvidia, which is perhaps the biggest one, and I don't feel like it's getting the coverage that this deserves. This is huge, guys. NVIDIA is basically bringing G-Sync support to FreeSync monitors. This is massive, all right? This is really, really important to me because I have a ton of monitors that are not G-Sync that are FreeSync that I'll actually potentially be able to use. So what they did was they went ahead and tested 400 different by separate manufacturers altogether. Of that 400, 
they really only certify 12 that they say that with a driver update that's going to roll out on January 15th, again, the 15th is like the sweet spot for them. Next Tuesday, all this stuff is going down. So on the 15th, they're going to roll out a driver update that'll allow you to go and enable G-Sync in a free sync monitor. So think of it this way. If you went to the store at all to buy a monitor and you wanted to pick one that was G-Sync, and it had the same specs as a non-G-Sync one. Everything else was identical. I'm talking your response rate, your refresh rate, your panel type, whether it's VA, TA, or IPS, screen, widescreen, ultra wide, whatever you want to call it. Just by adding G-Sync into it, it raises the price at the minimum by at least $150 to $200. That's the premium you'd pay for G-Sync. And now to me, telling me and sharing with the rest of the world that you can go ahead and just do a driver update and now your FreeSync monitor is gonna turn into a G-Sync monitor. I don't know about you guys, but I, it feels like they finally took the veil off and revealed that guys, it's the same technology that's always been used and they were clearly just manipulating drivers to make it G-Sync versus FreeSync. Cause all they're really doing is playing with variable refresh rate. You wanna match the refresh rate of your monitor with the one that your GPU is outputting so that you don't get screen tearing. In a nutshell, that's basically what G-Sync would help prevent. You don't have to turn V-Sync on, you can disable that so you're not getting a loss in performance or any kind of input lag and you're not getting that nasty screen tearing when you're gaming. Now this, like I said, this is huge guys because tons of free sync monitors get sold for way cheaper than G-Sync monitors just because they have that ability. And you don't actually only have to be one of those 12 monitors that were a part of the 400 that they tested. If your monitor does support adaptive refresh rate like FreeSync technology, you can actually go and download the driver and manually enable G-Sync. Now, I don't know how the performance is gonna be. I bet it might be a little bit buggy since they're not coming out and saying, hey, we support all this stuff. So like I said in the early parts of this video, Nvidia is really making the right steps in the right direction to stop coming off as this company that's only concerned with their brand name and be you know more focused on revenue versus getting what the gamers actually want getting what's good for the consumer so i'm pretty happy to say that i feel like they're becoming more consumer friendly just by making this move guys this is a big big move and like i said i don't think this is getting the coverage that it really deserves because they Imagine how much money they commanded and made just by keeping G-Sync separate from FreeSync. This was something that AMD and Nvidia were head to head on. And now that they're letting their technology move over onto basically AMD FreeSync technology monitors, that's awesome. This is a win for you. This is a win for me because if you want to go and buy a monitor that has all those specs, but you wanted it to have G-Sync, but now it's a FreeSync one, you could save a ton of money, pick up the FreeSync monitor and use it with your Nvidia card because, you know, a lot more people have NVIDIA cards than AMD cards just based on the different kinds of specs. Especially if you want to do high-end gaming, you're going to go with the route of NVIDIA. You're not going to go with AMD. So if you didn't want to dish out for the monitor, you guys can dish out. You don't have to anymore, basically, for it. And you'll be able to take advantage of G-Sync, which is pretty awesome, guys. But that pretty much winds us up, guys. I'm going to try and give you as much coverage as I can of CES, of all the things that I think are pretty major to our industry, whether it's tech or gaming, and some of the real cool things that are coming out. There's tons of stuff. If you guys want to check them out as well, you know, keep a eye out on Twitter, check on the hashtag for CES 2019 and you'll be able to see some of the real cool stuff that's coming out. But this is a big announcement. I'm pretty excited to see what AMD is going to come out with. They're going to have their conference uh, Wednesday noon Eastern Standard Time. So be sure to see a video from me giving you the highlights. Hopefully they reveal the Navi and 7 nanometer processor chips that we've been waiting for forever it feels like but i hope they come and do it guys that'd be awesome anyways let me know what you guys think below do you guys think this is pretty awesome this is huge news are you excited that you can possibly use your FreeSync monitor with g-sync capable gpus or nvidia cards basically and you know what do you think about the new 2060 the rtx 2060 i for one think it's a pretty decent card there's decent performance 1.6 times the processor performance of a or um the graphical performance of a PS4 Pro for that price range and all the other stuff that you can do with it. Like I said, you can actually do 4K editing with that card as well. They they went on to say stuff like that on their website, but not to carry on with that anymore. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As always, if you're new to my channel, do consider subscribing. It always does help this channel grow. And until then, I will see you guys on my next video. So peace out and stay smiling, guys.